For the past few months, my obsessions to anything related to small form factors or even micro form factor setups have been increasing and I have bought multiple low profile coolers and even those compact cases. And that is why for today, I plan to do a mini series wherein we will be checking these low profile coolers and see which is the best one for you or should you even spend your money on it. So for today, I'll be checking out this recently released downdraft cooler from Johnsbo, the HX6200D with a TDP rating of 200 watts. Starting out with the looks and dimension, the HX6200D comes in two different colors. A white version that comes with a white ARGB fan and the one that I have here which is the black out version that comes with both black heatsink and a black fan. Comparing it to other low profile coolers, the HX6200D is a little bit taller, measuring 63mm in height and 120mm both in width and length. But it is still much shorter as compared to AMD's Raid's Prism. And included to its fan is a 15mm slim fan that pushes cool air in towards the cooler's fin array. Design wise, I like the black version more as it fits more on those stealthy looking compact cases while build quality in my opinion is pretty superb as it is solidly built together with its really smooth nickel plated copper base. One thing that is common to most low profile CPU coolers is how you install it on a motherboard and this John's Bow HX6200 is no different. Basically what you need to do is just install the appropriate bracket whether you're using an Intel or AMD setup then flip over and install directly the bolts or nuts that came with the CPU cooler. Pretty straightforward process but I do hope they would include back plates on all platforms not only for added rigidity but at the same time so you can reuse this cooler around to other motherboards as the washers included in this cooler has an adhesive that you can only install once on a motherboard. One trick that I've been doing for my other CPU coolers that uses this the same design is by attaching the adhesive part on the nuts and screws instead of attaching it directly on the motherboard. Compatibility is a mixed bag. I'm happy that this supports Intel's latest LGA1700, a AMD's AM5 socket. Though make sure that the one you're buying comes with the AM5 bracket as there are older models like mine that doesn't have one yet. One thing that is surprisingly and disappointingly missing here are the inclusion of mounting screws for 25mm thick fans. While it's not a deal breaker, I do want an option to swap out my slim fan for a better one like Noctua's A12X25 if ever I want a better and a quieter option. Another thing that you might need to check is the clearance both for your VRM and memory heatsinks. I've tried this on my Gigabyte B450i motherboard and as long as your top VRM heatsink is under 30mm and your memory heatsink is under 45mm, you should be fine. For today's testing, our test setup consists of two scenarios under two fan speed settings. I went with fan speed as opposed to a normalized noise level to also compare the noise level between various coolers when either in 50% or 100% fan speed. Our first test scenario is on a manually clocked Ryzen 5 5600 that is running 4.1 GHz at 1.15 volts. And based from our testing, the HX6200 is pretty much neck and neck with AMD's Rates Prism at 100% fan speed but beats it slightly when running on a quieter setup. Gaming also sees better temps at 50% fan speed meaning we could see longer boost clocks with the HX6200. My other test scenario is just letting PBO run its course while testing it and we can see that they are also both identical in terms of cooling performance in our Cinebench R23 load test. And similar to my first test scenario, we are getting better average gaming temps when running our Jones Bow cooler with as much as 5 degrees Celsius difference when running at 100% fan speed. Weirdly enough, temps reached as high as 85 degrees Celsius despite only pulling 120 watts of CPU package power. I am quite doubtful that this thing can even sustain a consistent 150 watt pull from the CPU. Hence, their 200 watt TDP marketing claim is clearly false. Fan noise on the other hand is a clear winner for the John's Bow HX6200D as this one uses a much wider 120mm fan as compared to AMD's Rates Prism 92mm fan. 
with a 41 dBA ambient noise. The Jones Bow got a 43 dBA against 45 dBA on 50% fan speed, while a 3 dBA difference went on max speed. There is also a noticeable difference in the perceived sound as the Jones Bow cooler is still on the manageable side even at full speed. At the end of the day, the Jones Bow HX6200D retails at 2,200 Philippine Peso over at Lazada or that is roughly around 40 US dollars. And I am having a hard time recommending this one given that it's just performing closely against a stock AMD cooler, albeit it's the best one. But again, if you're opting for the HX6200D, you'll get these following advantages. First, of course, you'll get better case compatibility as this cooler is much shorter than AMD's Rate Prism. Second, you'll get a quieter experience compared to both AMD and Intel stock fan. And finally, if you're still keen on the aesthetics department, then you might want this, especially the blacked out design of the HX6200D. Just take note though that you should only run this on a 120 watt CPU or less as their claim of a 200 watt TDP is a complete BS. So I think that is all for today and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to write it down below. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you again in the next one.